The push and pull on the NSSF 2019 amendment bill will likely continue following Minister Kasaija's reported decision to backtrack on Parliament's decision to include new clauses in the Act. The contention lies with Amendment 24A, which seeks to provide for a 20% midterm access to savers aged 45 years and above who had been serving with the fund for more than 10 years. The Chairman General of the National Organization of Trade Unions, Usher Wilson Owere, says the minister is misleading the president by urging him not to sign it into law. The people who are eligible to get that money, they're about 300,000, not 2 million he has calculated on. Because these figures, he has calculated like everybody who is having a money in NSSF will get 20% uh, and, and that is the wrong side of what he has portrayed the whole thing. According to Kasaija's letter, NSSF has no cash and raising the required 2.9 trillion shillings to provide the 20% midterm access would mean selling off some of the fund's assets. Owere still differs from this argument. The collection of, of revenue every month is more than 100 billion per, per month. So you can't tell me that you have invested the whole money, but what about this money? You only need three months and you pay off some people and then it comes back. At Parliament, some members say Matia Kasaija is double speaking. NSSF can ask for time. They can say we need two or three years to be able to periodically raise this, but you cannot say that they don't have money, oh, there is no cash, where has it gone? It is not a privilege to receive what you saved. It is your right to receive on what you saved. Why is it that it comes out at such a time, a crucial time, where Ugandans could also appreciate their time of savings? In fact, this parliament must take Kasaija for disciplinary action, because he is now rejecting. Kasaija is a member of parliament. He's rejecting his own decision. I'm going to call a meeting of all the leaders including our members of parliament, we are going to sit down to give the president, first of all, facts. Some of the other proposed changes include empowering the board to introduce new benefits in consultation with the minister, expand social security coverage by providing for mandatory contribution of all workers, regardless of the size of the enterprise or number of employees, and also allowing voluntary contributions to the fund, among others. We tried to contact the minister for a comment on the matter, but all his known phone numbers were switched off today.